one, it is 19 minutes past nine. Among vegans around the world, James Asby is a well-known bloke. He famously took a sil vow of silence for a year to highlight the voicelessness of animals. Uh, animals in agriculture and now campaigns year-round for an end to livestock industry. He's in Perth this week to speak at the WA launch of a new documentary, Dominion. It's a one-hour feature-length, uh, it's a new feature-length documentary. It takes a critical look at humanity's dominion over the animal kingdom and it will be played tonight to a sold-out audience at the University of Western Australia. While he's here, among other things, James is attending a vigil organised by the Perth Pig Save Group at Lindley Valley Pork Abattoir. He joins us on the phone from outside the abattoir gates. Good morning, James. How are you? I'm doing OK, thanks, Ray. Wee. How are you? Very well, thanks. Now, tell us a little bit about what's going on out there at the abattoir this morning. Well, it's a lot better for us out here bearing witness to the atrocity from the outside than what's actually happened to the innocent beings on the inside. They're at a slaughterhouse right now. Their life is about to be ended. They are about to lose their most precious gift that anyone could ever possess. And it's going to be done in a violent and bloody way. So that's what we're doing here. There's over 80 people here who are aware of this atrocity and who believe it's wrong and that it should end. And we're here to share what is happening with the world because these are forgotten victims. People don't think about how these neatly wrapped packages of pieces of somebody's body got into our supermarkets. So we're bridging that gap because they're telling us that it's humane slaughter. And all I've been listening to for the last two hours is pigs scream as loud as they can. And you can probably hear it in the background. So tell us a little bit about why um people in the SAVE movement do this. You've, you've touched on the importance of bearing witness there. We've seen some fairly, uh, very disturbing images being played on national television on Sunday night about uh, live exports. Yep. Um, and it seems that a lot of the reaction is to the things that they have seen. So what in, in your international campaigning, how much difference have you found that it makes to people when they see what is happening in places like the abattoir you're visiting this morning? I think it makes all the difference because most people are animal lovers or they hate animal cruelty and most people can't even bear to watch what happens inside a slaughterhouse where animals get their throat slit or get locked into a gas chamber which is the most humane apparently method in Australia of killing pigs. So I think most people when they see it, yes it creates a, a big shift in them because we're hidden that violence is hidden from us deliberately and when people see it they can connect and feel empathy and realize hey they could never murder somebody they could never murder an innocent being whether that somebody that individual is from the human species or from any other species so why would they pay for somebody to do it for them paying the murderer is just as bad as committing the murder yourself and if we had to kill and eat animals to survive and be healthy that would be one thing but the fact is that we can live and thrive perfectly healthy without doing so, in fact, live a much healthier life. And there's 80 people out here right now, perfectly healthy, who are here making an effort to bring this injustice to an end. So tell us a little bit about the movie Dominion. This is uh, the follow-on from Chris Delforce to his last, uh, last film, Lucid. How does uh, Dominion take the, the, the case that Delforce is making further than that, that first film? Dominion is the meat, dairy and egg industry's worst enemy. It is so incredibly powerful. It shines light on all the darkness. It shines light on everything they hide from us. Every industry in Australia that's exploiting animals and killing them for profit. It shows inside factory farms, inside slaughterhouses, leather industry, fish farms, you name it. It's all in there. Dairy industry, egg industry, more violence than you could imagine happening in our backyard in our country and we claim to be a civilized society this is far from civilized gandhi said we can judge a nation's moral progress on the way that we treat animals on the way that that nation treats their animals and there's not a nation on earth that could consider themselves moral because of that because this animal holocaust is happening all over the world right now to eight billion lives every single day 74 billion land animals, over almost 3 trillion sea animals, all individuals who feel pain and suffer and don't want to die. And yet, 
countries like Australia, states like Western Australia, have uh, imposed animal welfare standards on industries such as this, and yep. the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, the RSPCA, <coughs> uh, credentials places like the abattoir that you're visiting this morning. So, yep. are you saying, are you saying to listeners to us here at this morning and elsewhere in the world that the RSPCA, set up for the protection of animals against cruelty, is in some way complicit in this uh, cruelty? One hundred percent, yes. They are. They are putting a tick of approval on the bodies of murder victims that end up in your, in the, our supermarkets. Yes, they are complicit in it and they're making things worse by making out like there is a right way to do the wrong thing. They're making out as if it's okay to humanely murder these innocent beings. And that is very much the wrong message to be putting out there. I'm speaking with James Ashby, an uh, Australian and international animal rights advocate, uh, campaigner. Uh, James, you make some, uh, from time to time, quite controversial statements connecting <coughs> animal rights to other rights issues, including racism, sexism uh, and, and gender issues. How do you just the parents on this? I personally have never, as far as anything I'm aware of posting, never truly badly offended or hurt somebody. I mean, there's been some people that have been offended, but I don't think there's been any serious drama around what, what I post necessarily. Now, in regards specifically to your question, uh, you, let's say gender issues, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to, but let's say if we're talking about the common practice of forcibly impregnating cows against their will in a restraining device. Now, some activists would call that rape because if you put a human animal, because we are all animals as well, if you put a human animal, whether it's a man or a woman, inside a similar restraining device and you shove things inside them and force semen into them, we would call it rape. So why don't we call it rape when it's any other species? Is there a good reason for it or is it just because they're another species? And so let's just say it's okay because they're not humans and maybe they're not the same as us in a lot of ways, but in a huge amount of ways they're the same as us. And again, we are just another species of animal. We all have a heart and a brain. We all want to live and don't want to die. We all don't want to be exploited and abused and have things shoved inside us by strangers. We don't want to have our throats slit. So I think there's a lot of parallels to make because we white people enslaved black people thinking that they were superior just because of the different race and that was wrong. And now we realize that and that happened not that long ago. And men believed that they could own women and they were superior to women. And we realize now that that was wrong and that wasn't so long ago either. And currently, human species believe that they are superior to every other species to the point that we will be happy to murder billions of them every day just because we like the way they taste because there's no essential nutrient or need to consume their bodies or their secretions. James, that'd be uh, outside the gates of Zinley Valley Pork Abattoir. Thanks for your time this morning. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for helping me share this message because this is one of the most important messages everybody needs to hear. We all need to go vegan so we can end this violence. And all that means, it's not a cult, it's not a religion. It is just about being kind and non-violent towards others. And others includes other species. Go to challenge22.com for a free 22-day vegan challenge and you get taught exactly how to make this positive change that will improve your life, your life expectancy, the length of it, reduce diseases in your own life, and reduce a huge amount of suffering and violence while del eating delicious, amazing vegan meals like burgers and pastas and pizzas and ice cream. We got it all, we got every reason to do it, but the most important reason is because the animal holocaust has been going on for far too long, it's unnecessary and it needs to come to an end as soon as possible. Now would be good. Yesterday would be better. You're on RTRFM 92.1, 28 minutes past nine. Coming up next, Katrina Love from the Animal Justice Party. Five, mate. Excellent. Yeah. Five. 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 Five.